Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here Thursday now, June the 6th, 2024. The topic of today's update, the main topic anyway, gyre season. What does that mean? Central American gyre, you know, gyre season, whatever. We're going to take a look at that. What it means for the next few weeks and what it's all about as a whole. Some historic hurricanes that have come from the Central American gyre. I've got a couple of resources to show you. And then we'll take a look at, at the end of today's update at a couple of interesting 360 videos that I want to make you aware of as we continue to promote what we do over on our YouTube channel, a great resource for all kinds of things related to hurricane season, severe weather, experimental stuff that we've been working on over the years. Just want to make sure you're aware of it and you can kind of see what we've been up to, past, present, and even future work that we post on our YouTube channel. All right, first of all, a little bit of a satellite tour for you. A uh, little area of disturbed weather in and around Cuba, south southern Bahamas, whatnot, not a big deal. Uh, this disturbance over here did bring some pretty heavy rain for our friends in parts of the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. That has since moved on. Otherwise, the trades are coming through pretty briskly through the region, and we don't see any tropical waves in here creating any mischief. The Gulf nice and clear still. Southwest Atlantic, for the most part, very clear as well with the exception of these two disturbances. Uh, but the Eastern Pacific, also pretty quiet. There's the intertropical convergent zone where the winds from the northern and southern hemispheres kind of come together there. And convergence means coming together. And you get that air to rise, or you know, because it's converging, it has to go up. Speaking of going up, you can see thunderstorms going up over the mountains of Mexico. Not a lot of convection, really, to speak of. Maybe a little bit here in southeastern Missouri. Otherwise, it is really hot with a big dome of high pressure out west, big upper level low sitting over the eastern United States. Pretty simple to just draw an easy weather map with just looking at the overall pattern. This out here, by the way, is your marine layer hugging the coast of Southern California and parts of the northwest Baja with a very stable, and uh, it's stable, but it's still, you got some moisture down there, but it's at the really low levels but a very stable environment over that cold water of the eastern Pacific, except for down here in the tropical areas. This is warmer, but we don't have anything really spinning up right now. So let's take a look at the, um, just real quick here, the tropical weather outlooks for the East Pack and the Atlantic are both nice and clear over the next seven days. So that brings me to today's little lesson about the Central American gyre. A tweet here from earlier today from my friend Dylan over in the Dallas area. Works for the Fox owned, Foxed, nope, Fox owned and operated. That's what I'm trying to say. Station in Dallas. It's Fox 4 there. And I've seen Dylan quite a few times this year as I've gone over to Dallas to do some severe weather work, of course, with our hail project. And I've known him for quite a few years. He's very much into the tropical scene. Used to be down at Wink TV in Fort Myers, I do believe is W-I-N-K, right? And uh, anyway, he's over in Dallas, and he put this out, and I was like, all right, let's talk about it today. So let's do it. So Dylan says the Western Caribbean is a spot to watch for tropical mischief as the Central American gyre, that phenomenon, spins up next week. And it literally does that. It's a regional phenomenon, and instead of the trades just blowing right through like this, you get this change in the wind flow, and it turns into this big gyre that's counterclockwise, turning motion in the atmosphere that has both geographic features, local topography that helps to shape it, so to speak. And sometimes you get the Madden Julian oscillation that comes along and interacts with it, or a shorter window of favorability that we call a convectively coupled Kelvin wave. And then you get these pieces of energy that can come off South America, maybe a tropical wave arrives from the east, and that gets all entangled in here, and you might get a tropical system to develop from it. So these are important features in the early part and the late part of the season, although they can be present, these gyres, all season. They typically are more in May and June and then towards September, October, towards the end of the season. There's also a great article about it over at foxweather.com. I'll make sure I link to this in today's description if you want to read all about it. Somebody put a lot of work into this and I wanted to show you this graphic right here. Some of the uh, hurricanes that we've experienced in the past have come from that Central American gyre. Most notably, of course, was Michael back in 2018 
That originated out of a Central American gyre event. Sometimes the CAGs, as we call them for short, are large. Sometimes they are smaller in nature. Uh, but from time to time, they do help to you know, sort of focus the Genesis area for something to get going and head up towards Cuba, maybe the Yucatan, oftentimes threading that area of the Yucatan Channel and getting into the Gulf of Mexico. So a great article here. I invite you to read it. Check it out. There are even some links within the article to studies from the American Meteorological, or at least in the bulletin, the studies are published in that bulletin. Make sure you check this out because it is an interesting phenomenon. Just a few bullet points for you right here. It is a sprawling area of low pressure, so it's a larger area than just a tropical wave coming along. It hangs around for a while as well. It can produce locally heavy rainfall across the region down there in Central America. And then, of course, we are most interested in it, I guess, because it can aid in the formation of tropical cyclones. And I already showed you some of those, including Michael and even Ida. Not 2021's Ida, but the Ida from 2009. And I was in Gulf Shores, Alabama, when the remnants of that came ashore. Just a little bit of history for you there. So, yep, that's what the Central American Gyre can do. Well, what is it going to do? Well, let's take a look at it here. This is the GFS operational model. And I draw your attention to where we are looking in the atmosphere, 500 millibars. I'm sorry, 5,000 feet at 850 millibars. Sometimes Mark's brain and his mouth don't line up. And sometimes they do, and even that can get confusing. But anyway, we're at 850 millibars or 5,000 feet up, generally speaking. And these are your different wind barbs down here. And there's the trades coming in, eh, for the most part, straight on in. You know, they're not going to be due east to due west. doesn't exactly work that way all the time. And then you start to see over here in the east pack, wait a minute, these are coming in from the west. I mean, almost straight west there. And then you get this sort of slowing of them or whatever, and then over here are these. So you start to, just to make out that shape, that something is changing. We don't have the general flow of wind across like this. Nope, it's changing already in the modeling. We can see that. And as we move this out into time, it gets ever more pronounced. And by the time we get out to about day five, that CAG, the Central American Gyre, look, you got westerly winds coming in here, southeasterly winds here. It's really starting to manifest itself fairly solidly down here, focusing that energy around Nicaragua and Honduras. And again, sometimes it's going to be more pronounced than others as we drag this on out to the next few days beyond that to a week's time. Absolutely, there's your CAG event down here. And it oscillates back and forth around the area. You know, the atmosphere is literally a fluid, so you're just not ever sure as to where it's going to set up. But what it can do, again, alluding back to these pieces of info here from Dylan, Fox Weather, the example of what has come from them in the past, once in a while, a piece of energy will consolidate and you can get a tropical cyclone. But look at all this orange and yellow coloring in here. Again, that's that vorticity or energy in the atmosphere streaming up even from the Caribbean all the way to the southeast, perhaps. So a wet, unsettled pattern, almost certainly, I mean, this is a pretty high confidence look right here, the pattern, but within that pattern, the big question for us watching for tropical activity, does something sort of grow out of this, you know, like a grapevine or whatever, you got a big vine of cantaloupes out there, we got some in our backyard, does fruit bear off of the vine? That's a good way to put it. And we just don't know because this is a complicated setup. There's a lot of unsettled weather down there. The models are trying to resolve it. And sometimes the, the GFS especially will latch on to any piece of heat and energy in the atmosphere. We generally call that convective feedback. And it just takes off with it. Like giving, I guess, anybody a whole bunch of sugar and you just take off, right? The model will do that. It's not quite that simple in model physics. But that's why we oftentimes see at a week to 10 days plus the GFS bundling energy spuriously. In other words, the energy may or may not even be there. And then it just runs with it. And the computer model says, OK, we've got the energy. We've got a good environment. Let's just develop this on out. And that's why you see people posting hurricanes at 10, 12, 16 days out. The shorter time frames, everything is a lot more certain. Those longer time frames, everything becomes more uncertain. And when you throw in 
this large weather feature down there, it makes things even more complicated. So it's just something to keep an eye on, as Dylan alluded to in his post, over the next week or two. All right, so we shall do that. That's what the GFS shows. What's the Euro show? This is from uh, today's run, the 12Z, but it's only every 24 hours because we don't have the full one out here. Not on Tropical Tidbits yet, but the idea is the same. If we go out to a week's time, um, the Euro, we're not as enthusiastic about that CAG event at all, which is surprising. Just following the wind barbs here, that's a fairly standard look to the overall pattern. A nice big old high pressure sitting out here, and you know the winds coming in from the east and you know turning and so forth. No CAG in the Euro, which is surprising because it is such a large feature in the model guidance that the GFS would have it. The Euro does not. You know, just for fun, so to speak, let me just switch over to the Canadian and see what it shows. Well, not really either. It's got more of a weird feature sitting up here uh, in the Eastern Gulf, proving my point that it is a complicated setup. Just trying to detect when the CAG will be there is hard enough. But generally speaking, it looks like the pattern down in this region will be unsettled as we get to the mid part of the month. And from there, we shall monitor and see what happens. But at least for now, everything remains nice and quiet. All right, so I want to show you this uh, over on our YouTube channel. Uh, and these are public, and I'm going to put a link to these, especially if you've got a VR headset. I've got the MetaQuest 2 myself. I really enjoy the bowling on it, in case you were wondering. It is. It's neat to just get in there and like have these VR bowling alleys, and I can score 200 plus like no problem. But we've done some 360 work ourselves using these GoPro Max cameras. A lot of people in the storm chasing world do this. It's not something new. But I want to make sure you knew these were out there, especially if you have a VR headset. And you can literally search for that term. And I'll put a link to it, but you can't probably click on a link. I don't know. Maybe you can watch today's update in your VR and then click on that link. But search for that. 360 video of Hurricane Delta on your VR headset. And check it out. And this is what it looks like in a browser, as an example. And the YouTube player here in Firefox lets you, you know, do that, where I can kind of pan around. Uh, but it is remarkable. This is the eye wall of Delta, what was left of it, coming into Louisiana way back in 2020. Seems like a long time ago now, doesn't it? But it's really, really neat. And more and more people in the storm chasing field are doing this. I've seen their videos where they're able to do the sort of stabilization on the supercell while they drive and the car kind of moves around it or whatever. And I want to do this in the hail project work as well. I've done some testing with it, but we're just missing the big hail. Again, I'm going to talk about that more tomorrow. But this is some of our hurricane work, and uh, Delta was really neat. But I'm going to be honest with you, it was this one right here, Zeta, that really stole the show. This is a gentleman, I don't remember his name off the top of my head, but he was in security uh, like the security manager or something like that. Somebody might watch this and go, oh, yeah, that's so-and-so. He turned it on for us at the Silver Slipper. We had that thing mounted on a pole, as you can see right there, like a fence post. And uh, he said, yeah, we'll be there. Yeah, we're going to stay for Zeta. Okay. Uh, I was like, be careful, uh, and, and we'll turn it on for you. So he did that, and it ran for about 90 minutes. Um, and that's what it looks like in 360. So this ran, like I said, for about an hour and a half, and it's just remarkable to see that surge come in. And uh, again, you can go in and search for Hurricane Zeta 360 video, Silver Slipper Part 1. I will link to it to make it hopefully a little easier, a little easier for you. i got to see if this is on a playlist, and if it's not, make sure we add it to a playlist that's publicly available. It's neat to see in a browser, even more cool to see. Let me just fast forward a little bit in a VR headset. Um, and trust me, parts two and three are just remarkable. I'll let you watch that yourselves, especially if you have one of those MetaQuest or whatever, uh, where you can watch this in true immersive 360. So that's a little bit about what we have over on our YouTube channel. More than just the updates and other things related, we do have some documentaries and the cool 360 stuff, and we hope to add more and more content as we go forward. All right, so make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel because when we post something, if you got the notifications enabled, you should be made aware. All right? So, yeah, we'll watch the gyre. It's gyre season. You didn't know that, did you? Well, now you do. You can talk about it around the... Do they still have water coolers at work? Maybe. 
Anyway, at least you can sound smart and say, hey, you know what, Bob? It's gyre season. And he might think you're talking about a gyro, and he might get hungry. But anyway, let me shut up and put this online for you. Everybody's in agreement to that, right? Have a good rest of your Thursday. From all of us at the Hurricane Track team, we appreciate you tuning in. I know I do. I'm Mark Suddeth. I'll see you again tomorrow.